Hi, welcome back to Resonance in Organic Chemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to do just a bunch of examples of, of drawing resonance structures, ultimately. And um, we're probably going to break this video up into a couple or a few videos, um, just so it doesn't get too crowded. But we're going to do a series of videos on drawing resonance structures. Okay. And hopefully you've watched the previous video or you have a basic understanding of the general rules of resonance and kind of what's allowed. Now, before we do the first one, I just want to kind of think about, um, you know, what rules this is going to um, sort of apply to. All right. So notice we have this system right here. All right. Remember what I said to do whenever you um, get a resonance problem. Does it have resonance? There's this general rule that you can follow, okay, and it, it works for a lot of, it works for pretty much all of them, all right? If you have a system where you have a single bond, double, single, double, single, double, single, and so forth, well, each of these double bonds right here, the double bond here, the double bond there, double bond there, all of those pi electrons that are in all, all of those double bonds they're separated by only a single bond. So we would say that these double bonds right here are in resonance with each other in some way. All right, they're in resonance with each other. Another rule that you can follow is if you have a single, double, um, single, let's throw a, um, a lone pair in there, single, double, single, well, essentially, when you have this pattern, double, single, lone pair, single, double, this lone pair right there is in resonance with the pi electrons right there in that double bond. And it's also in resonance with the pi electrons in this double bond over here. Okay? And if you haven't learned that trick yet, we'll go through it just so you can see it in these examples. And the other one you can have is, I'm going to make some space for this one over here, single, double, single, Let's throw in here a carbocation, CC, carbocation, single, double, okay? This is another general rule. Again, you have this carbocation right here, and it's separated by double bond, separate from double bonds by only a single bond, so double, double. So we would say that the carbocation has resonance with this double bond, and it has resonance with this double bond, or the pi electrons in those. Okay, and hopefully when we go through these examples, these series right here, these sequences, will start to make sense. So what I like to do typically is go through the molecule and just apply this pattern. Okay, and hopefully you'll see how I do this. Right, let's do this in red. So this is, we're going to go double, single, lone pair, and there's just a single over there, but that's all we need to worry about. So do I see anything in, this, in any of these patterns that this satisfies? Well, actually, yes. I have double, single, lone pair. That's what this is right here, double, single, lone pair, which means that the lone pair and the double bond should be in resonance with each other. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so now I just need to draw the resonance structure. When I have a lone pair that's separated from the double bond by a single bond, I throw the lone pair onto the single bond, and then the pi electrons right there, this pi bond, those electrons come up onto that carbon. Okay, so I'm going to draw the resonance structure. Okay, so I keep all the carbon skeleton the same. However, because this lone pair was thrown in here, it's now a pi bond, okay? And since this pi bond got thrown up here, it's now a lone pair, okay? So whenever you have a situation like this, okay? Whenever you have a situation like this where there's a general, let's just do this, just in general, something like that, okay? The rule is, is the lone pair becomes a pi bond and the pi bond that's already there becomes a lone pair. All right, how do you do that? Well, you throw this, the, throw this lone pair in here to become a pi bond, then this pi bond comes out and becomes a lone pair. So you should always have the same things as before, they're just in different places, right? Lone pair is now a pi bond, pi bond is now a lone pair, and these are the two resonance structures here. We're actually going to do a similar rule with this example right here. But let's first go ahead and label everything, okay? So we have double, single, double, single, and then a lone pair, right? Does that satisfy anything? Well, if we sort of thought about extending this one, and we're welcome to do that, to this, 
Right, we have double, single, double, single, lone pair. Notice, double, single, double, single, lone pair. Okay, so technically this lone pair is also in resonance with that double bond. So all of these are in resonance with each other. That's your quick check. So let's go ahead and draw the resonance structures for this one right here. And again, we sort of have the same rule. We have this lone pair that's separated from the double bond by a single bond right here. Same thing as here. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw this lone pair into the single bond, and that's going to kick this double bond or this pi bond onto this carbon. All right? So my next resonance structure is going to be this. So here's the double bond that's already there. Let's see. And I should have a lone pair right there. All right? So that's one of them. Again, we can sort of do the same thing. We have double, single, lone pair, single, double, right? But here I have a double, single, lone pair. Double, single, lone pair right there, right? So that's satisfied. So I can, those are also in resonance with each other. So I can throw this lone pair in there onto that single bond, then throw this pi bond onto that carbon, okay? In which case I get this resonance contributor right there. So this molecule essentially has three main resonance contributors right there. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. And now I'm going to do one more example right here that uses other atoms besides carbon and hydrogen. Okay, now this lone pair that's right here, notice this lone pair, you're going to treat exactly the same way you treat this lone pair right there. Okay, they're, they're, going to be the, they're going to be basically the same, okay, except in this case, you're going to actually get a charge on the nitrogen in some cases. All right, so let's do this. Now, let's look at what we have here, all right? So I have double, single, lone pair, single, double, and sure enough, that pattern is satisfied. Double, single, lone pair, but now I'm going to extend it on this side, single, double. That pattern is satisfied. All of those pi electrons are in resonance with each other. What I'm going to do, though, is you'll see why in a minute. I'm going to put one resonance structure up there and another one down here. All right. So let's suppose what I can do now is I can take this lone pair, throw it onto the single bond, right? And that's going to force this pi electron out, these pi electrons out, and go onto that carbon. So what do I get? Well, I get this right there. It has the hydrogen still. Now there's a double bond there, and now there's a lone pair on that top carbon. But also notice that that nitrogen gets a positive charge because it now has four bonds. Okay? Now let's assume that I threw that lone pair the other way. All right? I threw it the other way. Well, I'm going to actually redraw this over here just so you can see this. But suppose I had this again. Lone pair. Now suppose I threw it the other way, just for a second. Well, if I threw it the other way, again, remember we can even label this double, single, lone pair, single, double, right? Again, double, single, lone pair is satisfied in those series. So what I can do is I can throw the lone pair onto the single bond right there, forcing the pi electrons here onto that carbon, okay? And the resonance structure I would get there is going to be this. Okay, so that's the resonance structure I get right there. Okay, and those are essentially going to be the main resonance structures for that compound right there. Okay, so hopefully that rule kind of makes sense, and we're going to continue with a few more examples in upcoming videos. Okay, join us in the next few videos, like the video, subscribe for future videos and notifications. Thank you.